Welcome everybody to the Wisconsin Haunts Halloween special. I'm Matt Braxton, joined of course by... Hi, I'm Ann Holly. And right now we're at the St. Peter's Cemetery in Stevens Point. Since most of our investigations this year have been in Stevens Point, so we figured we should end the year in Stevens Point. Obviously there's going to be some background noise, so forgive us in advance for that. This place has some weird legends about it. Like, there are some old graves, like from the 1800s. There's obviously a lot of like ruined graves and graves in trees for some reason. In the bushes. Yeah. Piled stacked up together. I'm guessing they got knocked over and got lost to time because the families aren't alive anymore. Yeah, but with all this history, the legend is that there's a six foot tall headless chicken ghost. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure we won't see it. <laughs> Probably not. But there's also supposed to be light orbs and mist and a bunch of other spooky stuff. So hopefully we can catch it with our equipment. And also we did come here years and years and years, maybe almost 10 years ago. Yeah. And we got, we got this really weird red orb and that's supposed to be evil. Yeah. So hopefully we can contact something spooky and it doesn't follow us home. That would be good. <laughs> and it wouldn't be Halloween without our pumpkin spice lattes, so. Let's cheers. Cheers. And let's talk some ghosts. <laughs> so what got you into ghost hunting? Just so everybody, because they see us on camera and, you know, trying to find ghosts, they don't actually get to know us very well. So tell us about how you got into ghost hunting. I would think probably because I've always liked strange things, like spooky stuff, and um, had some experiences, I think, early on, um, even in the house that I grew up in, hearing footsteps and creaks and things when no one else was home. And um, then when I grew up and moved here, um, our house had some very strange things happen. Um, one of them was uh, after my mom passed away, and I, I feel like that was my mom speaking to me, but um, I was sitting there at night, late at night, the only one up, and I had a plant that kind of had a tendril hanging down almost to the ground on top of my bookshelf, and I happened to look up, and that tendril went straight out held that for like five seconds and then dropped down the air i checked everything because i'm like i this is weird you know so of course you want to debunk it so i'm checking the windows there's no drafts nothing's open there's nothing blowing out of the register there was absolutely no reason for that plant to do that weird so that was kind of freaky. Um, we had shadow people walking through when we first moved there. Um, a shadow person walking through the dining room through to the living room and then just disappearing. <laughs> um, I've had heard voices. I've had my, for a while there, we had some poltergeist almost activity, like or, like things flying out of the cupboards and doors shutting and that stopped. I saged. <laughs> I saged the house. Thank God. Uh, yeah. So that stopped. And um, I'm trying to think. We've had some really weird stuff. Not just ghost stuff, but like seeing my husband in two places at the same time. Like he couldn't possibly. I'm talking to him and he's standing right in front of me in the dining room. And then I go to go downstairs and he's at the bottom of the stairs. I'm like, you were just up here. You couldn't have gotten past me, you know, without me seeing it, you know. Yeah. That's happened twice. Footsteps, like I think my son's coming out of his room and I, I'm talking to him and I turn around, there's nobody there and I go knock on his door. He's sitting there with his headset on playing video games. So it wasn't him, who was it? I don't know. So yeah, I think after those things started happening, kind of really piqued my interest. And then of course I was watching videos on YouTube of um, different other people that would investigate and it kind of 
made me think, well, maybe, maybe I could do that, yeah. you know? And look at you can. Yeah, <laughs> you can. <laughs> How about you? Well, as a kid, I was always like reading ghost books in the library and stuff. So it's like, oh, that's cool, you know? We'd go like, oh, is are there, like, we came here <laughs> and like some other places just to like check it out. And we saw some interesting stuff like that weird red orb here. But then like now that I'm a little older, it's like not to make it super dark or anything, but like it's kind of scared of dying, <laughs> you know, like the whole you won't even be conscious enough to know that you're dead is kind of terrifying. So going on these things and being able to talk to spirits if they're there and like trying to find answers about it because hopefully it's not bad and hopefully there's something after so that's really why I like to do this is because it gives you a chance to not be <laughs> terrified even though you are terrified doing it <laughs> yes there's been some pretty scary moments but I, I get what you're saying there and it does make you feel better because we have had intelligent yeah conver I mean conscious saying our names and responding. responding directly to questions that something had to have a consciousness to do that so one of the most conscious ones was kate blood when she yeah. said her name kitty whose grave is this right here Ooh. yeah <laughs> just got the heebie-jeebies there that was a good one though because so many people were just telling all these stories about her that weren't true at all. And, you know, she was nothing but good. So it's like, it was kind of fun to debunk those stories. Yeah. Well, without further ado, let's try out a dowsing rod session in the St. Peter Cemetery. All right. I haven't done these for a little while. X is spirit with us. Right is yes left is no well we have someone with us thank you made an x let's start with the funny one is the story of the six foot tall headless chicken true and this one isn't going to be like your normal episode where we cut around all the dead air and stuff this we are going to do it a little bit <laughs> What is that? That is a no. <laughs> and I, so the like, legend isn't true. As you were talking, it was like <laughs> pulling. I'm like, okay. This one's going to be more like you're actually here with us on an investigation. We want to make it more personal and maybe tell a couple stories so you guys can get to know us along the way. Are you a male? No. Okay. Okay. So bring it to center. Are you a female spirit? She says yes. yes. Thank you. And are you buried in the cemetery? Okay, I gotta shake her out because she's stuck there. Are you buried in the cemetery? Well, that's odd. It says no. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Interesting. That is interesting because you would think it would be in the cemetery, it would be someone from a buried here. X, okay. Can you show up on film later when we take pictures? Or. Can you speak to us through the necrophonic? Yes. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, are there other spirits of people that are buried in the cemetery? Right is yes, left is no. Are you still with us? I'm not getting anything. I don't know if she left us. Are you, whoa, are you still here? Okay, 
So are there spirits here that were people that were buried here in the cemetery? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sometimes it's interesting how there's pauses in the conversation. Uh, like they need more energy or something. Yeah. I bet my yeah, I bet my battery will be dead on my camera. That's another thing when you go on. Yeah. Don't camera, use these. They're the only ones we have. <laughs> You go through a lot. No. <laughs> you go through a lot of batteries. Will we feel any cold spots or see any orbs tonight? Is that a maybe? I think that's yeah. a yes. It's just getting stuck on the. Yeah. Well, I look forward to that. I would really like to speak to you. So when we do a recording. Can you tell us your name at that point? Yes. Yeah. All awesome, right. thank you. When we do our necrophonic and then later the spirit box, please share. Are you able to move around freely? Can you leave the cemetery? I feel it pulling, 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 pulling. Yes, she can. Well, that's good. It'd be kind of sad to be stuck in the same place yeah. forever, you know? I have one. Um, are there spirits here that are trapped in the cemetery? Yeah. Will we get to talk to them tonight? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Did you used to live in Stevens Point? Is that why you're in this area? This is weird. I can feel the pulsing. Like, pulling, I should say. You know, I wonder, did you follow us from a different location? Still with us? Make an X if you're still here. I don't know. I think she might have flew the coop. All right. Well, thank you for sharing with us. Hopefully, we'll hear back from you. Yeah. Hopefully, we get her name. Yeah, that would be nice. All right, so now that we did our dowsing rod session, why don't we talk about what we feel are the most interesting investigations we've done. Uh, it could be scariest, it could be most fun. Like we've done some really cool ones like Elk Mound Tower, how beautiful it was. Yeah, that was gorgeous, especially in the fall. Yeah, I think one that comes to my mind right away is the Graceland Cemetery in Mineral Point because the story of it, like this one actually kind of, it's funny, it kind of mirrors that. There's a story of a vampire, which is obviously stupid, and we knew it when we went there. It was kind of one of the joke places. Graceland Cemetery, located only a few blocks away from the Walker House, is arguably even more well-known in the Mineral Point community. This is because of the legend of the Graceland Cemetery Vampire. So this place is supposedly haunted by a vampire. And like we know, this is kind of dumb. Just in case there are any spirits or anything here, we want to be able to detect that as well as, hey, maybe we'll find a vampire, who knows? But then it turned out giving us one of the most interesting pieces of evidence we've ever gotten. Cause it was nighttime and I think I was filming with the ultraviolet camera and I had it on the EMF detector. And I was like, okay, because it was spiking up a little bit, not too much to consider it. Like maybe it was like EMS from the ground or something, who knows? So I was like, okay, can you make it spike up to three or some higher number? Can you just raise it up more? And it, right on command, it did. Oh, to point three, point five. Whoa, okay. Thank you. Can I make it go higher? Thank you. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> right? We, oh my god. Wow. And it was like crazy. The clip the clip explains it all. 
So yeah, that was a really interesting one. What, uh, what's a good investigation that you enjoyed? Um, I think one of them was the cottage. Um, of course, the, the ladies from the cottage are awesome and, and a lot of fun to yeah. work with. Um, but when we investigated and went into the basement, probably would be, I think, the most physical contact I've ever had with a spirit. I was holding the EMF in my hand and we were talking uh, because there was a mirror in there and the spirit in the mirror, we found out her name was Agnes. And the psychic Janelle guessed it yeah. right away. I think it got it right away. Without knowing it. Agnes? Um, no. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the yes. name that he got. Right off the bat, Janelle unknowingly says the name we captured not once but twice during our investigation. Agnes. Agnes? Getting the same name three times is solid evidence that Agnes is the name of the spirit in the mirror. That was really cool. But we, I don't remember exactly what we were asking at that moment, but all of a sudden I got, it felt just like when you hang on to an electric fence, zap, zap. Oh, oh. something got me in the arm. Really? It was like a, ow, that's not nice. It's like I'm it being spiked all the way up to red when it did it, that. It was like electric shock. Okay, be nice, you guys. Yeah, be nice. I'm not trying to hurt you. And as I'm being zapped, the, the EMF was going up all the way yeah. to the top. Uh, and that happened a couple times. So it was literally shocking. <laughs> so um, that's a very memorable one. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, I one I think was the Ward House. That was so, um, I had such a powerful connection speaking to her father, like just feeling his spirit. It just felt like it went right through me and it was um, really emotional. I didn't expect to tear up and feel feel so strongly. I can, I can feel his energy like running from the top of my head down out my toes. He's here. And it, it made me feel good like, okay, this is this is real because mm -hmm. you know where, where would that come from? you know? What more can you ask, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like like some confirmation yeah. that he's still here and but like even as ghost hunters what more can you ask for to like help somebody out in that way yeah was your dad a little bit of a jokester oh yes <laughs> yes yes he was <laughs> yes <laughs> oh my goodness everybody loved my dad but and the house was beautiful too oh, it wow. looked like a museum it was awesome. I would love to go back. I, I yeah. almost feel like taking her up on the offer of coming for Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should do a little... Second Halloween episode? Mini, Maybe mini next episode. year. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of my personal favorite places is the Devil's Punch Bowl in Menominee. Like, the first time we went, everything was... Like, it felt like the whole, like, ground was shaking and we were all off balance. We didn't get any voices. We are, we're like feeling like the whole world shifting. Yeah, we're all dizzy. That's what I just felt when I walked up here. That's so weird. And I feel kind of like, like I could everything. Feel... We all felt weird, very off balance. Yeah, that was bizarre. I've never felt that way before. Yeah. Like you almost felt sick. The ultraviolet camera wouldn't work. No. Look at this. Nothing. <laughs> weird. Everything is crazy. Is crazy day. Day. Even stranger, Taylor lost her necklace, which is meant to ward off evil and bad energy is. So Matthias went to go look for it. Well, I found it, but the, the line was cut. Oh. We can just retie it. I'm sorry, Anne. That's all right. <laughs> it's, it's just, How it's the just heck like did a... that No. That one also had a stupid story with gnomes, but like <laughs> yeah. when you're actually the there, yeah, give them Skittles and they'll let your car start or something. Just the whole place felt super off the first time. Yeah. And that bridge, or the tunnel, we got some weird voices in there, like a get out or something. And then the second time we went, it was even creepier. Like we were hearing actual footsteps in the tunnel, like loud, splashy stomps. Is that you? Listen as clear footsteps come from the tunnel.
it was pretty scary and i know the but the feeling that down in the, where the waterfall was supposed yeah. to be was totally different that time yeah the I, second time yeah yeah like i didn't feel that dizziness or the pressure or disorientation like we could barely stand up like we're like tipping over and yeah i've never had that before and the second time there was nothing nothing there was a lot of like i'd say demonic activity yeah like in the tunnel area but in the actual punch bowl area nothing it's so weird how it can be on and off just like that there was less water that i i know for yeah. sure because it was barely a trickle coming down that waterfall and the time before it was actually yeah. pouring over so i don't know if the presence of the water made some kind of difference to the energy i'm not sure the water's full of energy that's why i think this place has so much we shared some interesting stories hopefully we have more i mean we're coming out with ghosts of wisconsin 3 uh next year um but yeah let's start with a necrophonic session and see if we can get her name What this app does is it sends out little bits of words and phrases and supposedly spirits can piece those sound waves together to form actual words and phrases instead of just little fragments that this app spits out. So we've gotten incredible stuff with it. Getting as like you've seen. Yeah. So it does do something. Especially the Carryville. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. Let's see if we can get the girl that we contacted. Let's see if we can get her name. Can the spirit that was speaking to us earlier, the female spirit, can you tell us, are you here with us? Use this to string some words together. We were wondering if you could give us your name, because you did say you would be able to tell us your name. Can you tell us what your name is, clearly? Sounds like it said shut the hell up. Can you tell us what your name is, clearly? I thought it said Cinderella. <laughs> Can you say your name clearly for us? Bridget. Bridget? Yeah. Can you say your name clearly for us? Bridget. Bridget. I don't mean to interrupt, but what? you know how you see figures out of the corner of your eye? Yeah. I saw something walking like this, but there's nobody there. Huh. Like, unless they went in the woods. That was weird. Anyway, <laughs> was there something walking past here that was not alive? What was that? Was there something walking past here that was not alive? What was that? What was that? Is the story of the headless chicken true? Is the story of the headless chicken true? I wonder where that story came from. I know. It just seems so ridiculous, you know? I wonder if a voice comes through, if they would be speaking Polish, because like I was saying before, when we first got here, Almost every single headstone is po it's a Polish person that's buried there. Hmm. It'd be interesting to see if any Polish words come through. Yeah, that we know. Yeah, that we know. I don't <laughs> know very many, but I have friends that are Polish that could probably tell me. Tell them to watch the Halloween special. Yeah. <laughs> see if you hear anything you recognize. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Get to work. Be a dupa. Yeah. <laughs> go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> what? That was creepy. It sounded like Ignatius or something. Or something like that, yeah. What? What? 
Interesting. That well, was interesting. Hopefully you guys leave some comments of what you heard, because we know we heard some weird stuff. Yeah. Uh, why don't we get into our next topic? Although, I think we need to switch to infrared cameras, because these are looking pretty dark. Yep. All right, so we have our infrared cameras on. We already had that one turn off by itself, so hopefully it doesn't do that again and lose our footage. And my camera died, but I got new batteries. Yes, yeah, so let's, uh, let's talk about spiritual protection, but first let's talk about that woman's house here in Stevens Point. <laughs> so, take it away. Well, I, th I know I've mentioned this in other episodes, but um, we had really good experience connecting with her niece, and I, again, felt like her presence like go right through me. Like, I definitely could feel that she was there. However, there was something dark in that house. Very dark. After we came home, it was either that night or the next night, I had my first sleep paralysis episode, and there was, like, I was awake, and there was, like, this demon thing sitting on my chest and talking to me and freaking me out. Do you remember, like, the night or two after I had that, then I had a sleep paralysis episode where there was a devil thing on my chest. I'm blink or like trying to blink and there's like this thing and it looked like a demon. It was really scary. She's getting scratched. Where I heard the voice in my ear, I was standing right where you are, coming into the bedroom when I heard that voice. Get out of this house. Move out. <laughs> Move out. It was just after we had been to her house. And I was like, I feel like it followed me, but then didn't stay. It was like just showing me. Yeah, don't mess with us. I, after that, I was like, sage, sage, sage. And I charged all my crystals and it really affected me. Like I got really depressed afterwards. and wasn't a good feeling so yeah I think that followed us home and we did have uh what did we have these by then yeah 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 we did because we gave her one um this is a bunch of different kinds of crystals that are protection um mainly the black tourmaline I think is one of the strongest yeah. protection crystals but anyway I'm getting off topic here well no that's perfect because I mean, anytime you're dealing with a demon, like we, we've we dealt with so many, and it's weird because every time you're dealing with a demon, it seems like things go wrong, like the cameras turn off. Uh, you just like have so many weird coincidences, like you forget something and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens that happened at the Devil's Punch Bowl and like Satan's Cave when our cameras just didn't have any footage on it even though we knew they were recording because that one has a red light on it every time you're filming. Yeah, that's bizarre. When you're dealing with dark energy it's like really weird things happen and then when you're in a place that it's like more light like the ward house we didn't have those things happen no and you i didn't feel bad afterwards it felt great you know yeah. like that was a totally different experience those two houses so did that woman what what ended up happening with her because i um she i know we had made the suggestion we had given her the holy water from lords and um we gave her the protection necklace and we t did we give her sage or we talked to her about getting sage we definitely saged yeah. her house we did sage her house i think we gave her the suggestion of contacting a priest and i know she had trouble at first but eventually she did have a priest come and do an exorcism however she did say after that she was still having some things happen but not as bad. That's so, better at least. I haven't heard from her since, so I'm hoping that she's living her best life and not having any more demonic stuff going on in her house. Yeah, because she was getting scratched. And yeah, and the dog was all upset. And That was one of the greatest pieces of evidence that we've gotten too, was she'd say that her dog would run upstairs to hang out with the spirit of her other dog and I got on camera the dog going upstairs, and the second I got upstairs, the EMF meter went off. That it was, was crazy. Cool. 
She was in the room. Taylor, bring me the EMF detector. I hand him the detector and what happens next is incredible. Is there someone in here? Is there someone in here? In here? But yeah, so if we need to protect ourselves too, you know, because we're going to these places and dealing with dark forces that mess with us and our stuff and can follow us home, as we've seen countless times, I've had stuff follow me. I think something followed me from Elk Mound Tower. I've had scratches too. So it's like, we gotta try every method possible, even if it doesn't really work. At least you're trying something. Yeah. And the best way to defeat negative energy is with positive energy. Even if you're believing something that doesn't work, if you believe it strong enough and send out those positive vibrations, you can essentially kill the negative force. At least you hope. Right. One of the biggest ways and cheapest ways is getting crystals. I mean, citrine, the black tourmaline necklace. Uh, we have amethyst, yep. just normal quartz. We got rose quartz, selenite. All those are supposedly really good at keeping the bad juju away. And if that's not enough, you can get holy water. We don't have any here, but... No, but I mean, you can go to any... Yeah, just ask for something. They'll yeah, give it to you. Church. If nothing else, we have uh, sage over there. We have sage spray that you can get. Stuff, which is nice if you're sensitive to smoke. This, it's got, you know, the sage oil in it or essence or whatever. Yeah. So I, I think it works just as well. And, and we're gonna be saging after tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we begin our spirit box session? Sounds good. All right, so now we're going to be doing a spirit box session in St. Peter's Cemetery. And while we're doing this, it's going to be the same thing as last time. We're just going to play it and hopefully you guys, along with us in real time, can pick out voices. Um, I know here for some reason it can pick up some radio waves, even though I took the antenna out. So hopefully yeah. we don't get too much of that. But uh, let's try to see what we can get. And Anne's going to be taking digital photos yep. and we'll put them on the screen. Hopefully. You guys can see some stuff in the photos, as well as us in real time to point it out. So let's uh, let's go. Okay. Can you come talk to us? Tell us your name. Oh. We got a woman's voice. Oh. What? Get away from there or something? What? Get away from there or something? We'll slow that one down for you guys because that yeah. was really clear. Could you stop it? Because that yeah. was really clear. Could you stop it? Because that yeah. was really clear. Could you stop it? I just saw something move by my car. Like a dark... See, you know, I saw something walking by. Oh, well, this is too far away. Are there shadow figures at this cemetery? Can you tell me your name? I'm Matt. Whoa. Can you tell me your name? I'm Matt. I'm Matthew. Whoa. I'm Matthew. We're here to talk with you. To learn about the afterlife. To learn about the afterlife. Yeah, we don't mean to be disrespectful and we're not trying to harm anything. We just want to understand better and communicate with people that have passed on that would like to talk to someone. I just saw it too. I just got the shivers. Huh. Definitely cold all of a sudden. Did we contact a woman named Bridget? A woman named Bridget? Bridget? Did we get your name correct? Did we get your name correct? 
Open our pictures in five, four, three, three, two, one. Hey, Matthew here. I originally was going to avoid doing a voiceover for this special, so it would feel more like you were actually there ghost hunting at St. Peter's with us, but upon editing, I noticed this picture that Anne took and wanted to point it out. This picture appears to have a mist-like figure that I think kind of looks like a person's head and face. This filter should make it even easier to see. It was over 70 degrees outside, so there was no way it was our breath being captured, and it showed up right after our countdown. This is undoubtedly some of the greatest, coolest, and creepiest paranormal evidence we've ever gotten. I'm getting so chilled up. And the wind is warm. That's the weird yeah. part. The wind feels warm compared to where we're sitting. There's something, it's hard to make out. Is the story of the chicken man real? And on a light note. Can you tell us about the chicken man? How did that story come to be? Anything left to say before we head out? Alright, well, thank you for speaking with us and showing up in our pictures if you did. Alright, so that was St. Peter's Cemetery. Thank you guys for joining us on our Wisconsin Haunts Halloween special. <laughs> if you enjoyed this more of a talk show format, make sure to let us know. Yeah, and, leave uh, a comment. Yeah, comment any, anything that you caught that we didn't, because this is in real life for us, so you can obviously miss some things. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next year with some more Wisconsin Haunts. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Thank you.